بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful all praise is due to Allah the Lord of the worlds may Allah blessings and peace be upon our master Muhammad who was sent as a mercy to all creation and his pure progeny. May the wrath of Allah be upon their enemies. Dear brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. At the outset of my speech, I would like to thank the organizers, especially Samahat Hujjat al-Islam, Shaykh Hashim Ghadiri, for this festival, for their efforts. It's a great honor and a real privilege to be here with you tonight. And forgive me for my poor English language. As Muslims, we believe that the Holy Quran throws a great challenge to all nations. This is because it is the eternal miracle of Islam that no one has been or will ever be able to take up the challenge and produce anything comparable to such a, mir a miraculous book, miraculous book. The Holy Quran is the only book that no matter however much it has been read, learnt, and looked into, it will still remain relevant, tender, and constantly involving. One can read any other book once or twice, but will soon get bored and lose interest and probably not see the need to read it again. Should you have the interest to read it again, you will not find it that, bene that beneficial. In fact, it will not add anything to your knowledge since you have fully absorbed the book's content. Except the Holy Quran. However, However, whoever grasps, grasps, whoever grasps it, no matter how many times they have read it, they will still find it relevant and prestigious. They will constantly feel the need to go back and read it again, ponder and reflect on it. This is because every time the Quran is deeply read, a new and valuable information is derived from it. For instance, a new mind dazzling meaning or insight could be revealed from a verse which you have personally read tens of times. That's why we see that the study of Quranic exegesis has still been ongoing for more than 1400 years. It remains to be the focus of discussion amongst scholars, scientists, researchers, and thinkers, including those non-Muslims. This glorious book is the miracle of our religion of Islam. We have the right to present our holy book as a challenge to the nations. We also have the right to consider Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, as another miracle of our religion of Islam. And to present his cause as a challenge to all nations. Why? Because if you search across the land, whether you turn east or west, 
you shall not find such a human's course effectively monitoring the reaction of humans throughout history as the cause of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Despite the fact that the Battle of Karbala was in fact one of the shortest battles and wars, it had lasted only a portion of one day and resulted in the death of no more than 100 persons at the utmost estimation, you find that this battle has turned into a major global issue arousing wide interest at all times, especially during the month of Muharram. Since 14 years ago until now, until today, the message of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, has remained alive as a source of aspiration of millions and millions of people throughout history. They feel as if it has just occurred before their eyes. No matter how many times they look into it, compose about it, hear or discuss discuss its tragic details, they will not lose interest exactly like the one dealing with the Holy Quran. What is the secret of this connection? Why has the Battle of Karbala in particular, which is considered symbol compared to the other major battles with greater death tolls? gained much more global interest and continuous reaction from even non-Muslim individuals to the extent that many shed their own blood on the day of Ashura in commemoration of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Why is Imam Hussein's name upon every tongue? Why do we always discover new astonishing facts and insights when we listen to a lecture on the battle of Karbala or read about it again. Although many of us have already learned the detailed incidents of the battle by heart. The answer is because Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, is a miracle of Islam exactly how the Quran is. Indeed, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, is a living internal miracle. Exactly how the Holy Quran has left the whole world, world in a daze, Imam Hussein's personality has also left the whole world in a daze. Just as there is no book as effective as the Holy Quran, there is also no cause as influential as the cause of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. The cause of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, has a great impact on the human's soul once it is known and understood. It has the ability to move people deeply as they realize the greatness and sacrifices made by this very man for truth freedom, and human dignity. Many wars, many wars have taken place throughout history. Many individuals have made sacrifices, and many have been oppressed. However, they have all faded in oblivion. They are hardly remembered by any. They might be remembered perhaps only in some special occasions within a limited, controlled and cold manner. For instance, people might assemble at a particular symbol's grave on the day of this demise, of his demise, place a bouquet of flowers, remain there for a minute of silence and it is all over at this point. However, as for Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, 
one should ask himself does a single day go by without having ceremonies held around the globe in commemoration of such a great symbol as Imam Hussein During the month of Muharram and Safar, when people head towards Karbala on wonders how they march in millions before his holy shrine, where they, where they practice the morning rituals on a scale unparalleled by any other rituals. rituals. Have you ever witnessed such amount of people gathering up at a person's shrine other than Imam Hussein's? Peace be upon him. Has there been any other cause receiving greater attention from around the globe in such an astonishing manner other than the cause of Imam Hussein? Peace be upon him. What would make a Chinese man, as an example, mourn for the tragedy of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, the same way a Canadian man would. What would make an African man weep upon the loss of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, the same way a Russian man would. Various ceremonial, ceremonial, ceremonial gatherings, I mean majalis, are held in all parts of the world during the month of Muharram by individuals who do not belong to the Arabian Hashimi lineage, lineage of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, or have kinship with him whatsoever. Yet they take Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, as their main rule model. They hold ceremonial gatherings in commemoration of him and beat themselves upon his loose. I was once told by the founder of Sayyid al Shuhada organization in Kuwait that he had gone during the 90s to one of the African countries seeking to preach the religion of Islam and Shiism. He had initially thought that there would be no Shia in that country. However, he later acknowledged that there was an isolated village in the middle of the African uh, jungle, which would take him about a day and a half to get there due to the bad road conditions, as the roads were unpaved, there was no phone lines, no electricity, no any sign, and no any signs of modern life. When he arrived there, he was surprised by the fact that the residents of the village were all Shia Muslims. <laughs> However, due to the factors of time and isolation, their religion, their religious awareness had gradually faded away. Surprisingly, the only thing remained there was an, a flag, was an old flag labeled O Hussein. And the only thing that remained etched in their mind was Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. That is why they used to loudly cry in their language, O Hussein, O Hussein, O Hussein, Ya Hussein. Certainly, you can never find any other personality or cause having such influence and impact. Therefore, we can confidently say that Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, is indeed an eternal miracle of the sacred religion of Islam. 
Historians have narrated that one of the Prophet's companions by the name of Anas, son of Al-Harith Al-Kahili Al-Asadi, had heard the Prophet, peace be upon him and his pure family, saying that his grandson, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, would be martyred on a land known as Karbala in Iraq. However, whoever is martyred along with him will be granted a high status in paradise and whoever isn't will certainly be filled with great remorse. Since then, Anas ibn al-Harith al-Kahil al-Asadi had decided to leave everything behind and head towards the land of Karbala which was an uninhabited desert at that time where he pitched where he pitched a tent and lived there uh, alone for a long time so that he would not miss the privilege of being martyred along with Imam Hussein peace be upon him some people from nearby Villages used to go animal hunting in Karbala and notice Anas's tent. They would make their way towards to the tent, convey their salam and ask as to why he was living there by himself. To which he used to reply, to reply, I am Anas, son of Al-Harith Al-Asadi, a companion of the Holy Prophet. I heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and his pure family saying, Hussein will be martyred on here, so I live here because I might meet him and be killed along with him. Indeed, by the time Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, arrived in Karbala, this man was advanced in years. He tied a bandage on his head to keep his eyebrows in position so they so that they wouldn't fall on his eyes he was the first to meet imam hussein peace be upon him and amongst and he amongst the first to be killed on the day of ashura in the holy ziyarah of Nahia, Imam Mahdi's ode. Imam Mahdi's ode to the martyrs of Karbala. We really we re realize that Imam Mahdi, peace be upon him, mentions this great man and conveys his salam upon him too. Where would you find such love, sacrifice, loyalty, and strong attach attachment to the personality of such symbol and leader? Certainly, this is what makes Imam Hussein's cause exceptional in all aspects. Since Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, has been martyred this world has not witnessed a moment of calm until today. The conflict between truth and falsehood, justice and injustice, humanity and brutality is still ongoing until today. Today we can clearly see the victory of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and the victory of those who have believed in his message and teachings. We can also clearly see the defeat of Yazid and those who followed in the, foot, in the footsteps of Yazid, may the wrath of Allah be upon him. Amen. There is a tradition attributed to Imam Zain al-Abideen. The essence of this uh, hadith tradition is that after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein and his companions, 
there were only three Shia individuals left on earth. And the rest were all followers of Yazid and the sons of Umayyah. And now what do you see? From three individuals to about half a billion Shia Muslims on earth today. All shout with one voice, Ya Hussein. Where is the path, where is, whereas the path of Yazid and Bani Umayyah, rather even the path of Abu Bakr and Umar, is losing followers, followers day by day. Every day there are more people being guided through the message of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and his teachings. They declare their conversion to Shia Islam. Have you ever heard that a Shia individual has converted to the religion of Yazid? Or even Abu Bakr and Umar? Have you ever heard a person declaring his rejection from the pure household of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and befriending Abu Bakr, Umar, and Aisha instead? Why do Shia Muslims increase in number and the followers of the other sects always dwindle? How have they managed to increase from three to millions and millions. And one, the other, and on the other hand, where have the millions, where have the millions followers of Yazid gone? This has only one explanation. Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and his followers have gained victory and thus are alive today. Whereas Yazid and his followers have been defeated and thus are dead today. Dear brothers, I will conclude my speech with two traditions attributed to Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. The reason why I have chosen to narrate these two particular traditions is for the reason that they might be unknown to most of you. This is unfortunately due to the fact that they are hardly mentioned by any of our speakers as a means to take into account the feelings of the followers of the other sects. However, I do believe that it is one of the obligatory duties of our religion to no longer veil the traditions of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, just because some might refuse to accept them. These two traditions clearly reveal to us what stance Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, has taken on Abu Bakr, Umar, and Aisha. <laughs> This is indeed a very important issue and should be made clear unto people. In fact, it is as, an import, it is as important as knowing what stance Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, has taken on Muawiyah and Yazid, as an example. Why do we limit ourselves to mention what Imam Hussein has said regarding Muawiyah and Yazid? Why do we not pay as much attention to what he has said regarding Abu Bakr, Umar, and Aisha? The first tradition has been reported by one of our greatest scholar, greatest old scholar, Sheikh Abu Salah Al Halabi. May Allah be pleased with him. In his well known book, Taqrib Al Ma'arif. This book was considered reliable by many of our great scholars, including Al-Alam Al-Majlisi. May Allah be pleased with him. <laughs> Shaykh Al-Halabi narrated, when Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, was asked about his stance on Abu Bakr and Umar, he said, 
what it means. By Allah, they have usurped our right, stepped on our necks, and made people ride over our necks. That meaning is they have made people commit injustice toward Ahlul Bayt, towards Ahlul Bayt. Verily, Allah shall punish them and intense punishment on the judgment day when people request our inter intercession. As the second tradition, it has been reported by our great scholar Al Kulaini. May Allah be pleased with him in his book Al Kafi which is the most authentic Shia books. Shaykh Al-Kulayni narrated, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, confronted Aisha when she had gone out to strike Imam Hassan's coffin with a rouse, with a rouse at the time of his burial. He said what it means, a long time, Ago, you and your father had disgraded, disreg disregarded, sorry, disregarded the privacy of the Messenger of Allah. You brought to his house those whose nearness he did not like. Allah will hold you responsible for this, O Aisha. Aisha replied, take your son, she means Imam Hassan, son of Ahlul Bayt, take your son away from my house, you are contentious people. <laughs> These two traditions reveal to us the stance of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, on these inimical characters. Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, made it crystal clear that Abu Bakr, Umar, <coughs> Umar and Aisha had taken their right away and caused them immense harm, due to which they shall, they shall cons consign to the most gracious doom on the day of judgment. Thus, the battle of Karbala was not only against Muawiyah, Yazid, and Bani Umayyah, but it was also against Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Aisha as well. Lastly, I would like to thank you again. I ask Allah the Most Exalted to make us from among the supporters of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين. الله.